G'day everyone. Today we're gonna to have a look at this DJI Neo drone. It is a miniature drone with a lot of big features from DJI packed into it. It's also the cheapest drone from DJI and I bought it today for 299 Australian dollars. Now that is the drone only and you're expected to control it with your mobile phone. You can of course buy the DJI controller which is compatible with this drone and the DJI goggles if you wanna spend the extra money. But I think for beginners getting into using a drone, something like this is absolutely perfect. It's got a lot of features that you'll find in the bigger drones, but in its miniature size, you can take it with you. It's quite portable and just go out and take some shots with the 4K camera. So today we're gonna to take it out, have a look, see how it performs. We're gonna test all of its features and we're gonna have a look at all of its specs. So let's get started. Now, before we go out and try the drone out and test it, let's have a look at some of the specs we'll be testing against. The unit itself weighs 135 grams. It is rated to do three meters a second ascent speed and two meters a second descent speed. And on the horizontal plane, it'll do six meters a second in automatic mode. In sport mode, it'll do eight meters a second. And in manual mode, it is rated to do 16 meters a second, which is pretty quick. Let's just see how it goes. Now, when we talk about range with the drone, we have a removable battery, which we can charge via a USB-C cable, or we can remove it from the drone itself and charge it externally with a DJI charger. Now that battery should give us around about 17 minutes of flight time off a full charge or around about seven kilometers of range. Now from the phone itself, if we're connected via Wi-Fi, we have a radius of 50 meters. That is the distance we can be from the drone before that signal cuts out. If we need a larger distance, we can use a DJI compatible controller and that'll bump up from 50 meters to 10 kilometers. Now I doubt on a drone this size, we'd need 10 kilometers of range, but that's an option if we need it. Now wind rating is an important factor when using a drone, especially a small drone like this. How affected by the wind is it? DJI rate this one to eight meters a second or 28 kilometer an hour winds maximum. We took it out and it was 24 kilometer an hour winds and we were on the beach so it might even been a little bit more and it was affected quite badly by the wind. We can see here it's moving around quite a lot but the video it produced was still very smooth. The software inside the drone will compensate for the movement of the drone in the wind and it will still look pretty good. It's not perfect and the drone is moved around a little bit by the wind but it does compensate pretty well. Now, when it comes to a drone like this, I think the most important part is the camera. It's most of the reason why people are buying drones is so they can film things. This one has an excellent camera and it's largely the reason why I bought it. It has a half inch image sensor with an f-stop of 2.8 and an ISO of 100 to 6400. It can film in 4K at 30 frames a second or 1080 at 60 frames a second and it has a negative 90 through to 60 degree gimbal. Now that gimbal basically can move all the way around that motion and it will automatically adjust as the drone moves and we can also manually change where the camera is pointing throughout that range. All of the images and the videos are stored internally on a 22 gigabyte internal storage. No need for SD cards or anything like that. It'll store it on the drone and we can wirelessly move all them files to the phone when it is connected to the drone. Okay, so now it's time to turn the drone on and go and use all of these modes that we've got. To turn it on, we have a button at the bottom here. We press it once, we let go, and then we press it again. Our battery percentage will fill up and it will make a noise to tell us it's on. With that switched on, we have different modes that will light up to tell us what mode we're in. We can press this button at the top to change modes, or we can change the mode on our phone. We also have the option of voice control. We have voice controls in the setting of our phone. It'll tell us which voice command will do which, and we can also change them as well. We press this button on the top and it will go through the modes. It'll actually tell us what mode we're in as well. So let's give that a go. Follow. That's the follow me mode. Droney. Droney mode. Circle. Circle mode. Rocket. Rocket mode. And direction track. And direction track also has a couple other custom features where we have boomerang and helix as well. So if we start on follow me mode, we'll go through each mode and see what they do and just how they perform. Follow. Okay, so here we are in follow mode. Basically, the drone will take off off our palm and it will track us and follow us in whatever direction we're going. The faster we go, 
the faster the drone will go as well. We tried it out here on the beach when it was a bit windy and it still followed us pretty well. And we hopped on the bike as well and we went as fast as we could. I got to about 30 k's an hour here on the push bike and it kept up pretty well. You can hear it behind you. And if you come to a stop, it will come to a stop pretty quick as well. The follow mode for me was the most commonly used ones. And in settings, we can change how far away it follows us and how high it is when it's following us as well. Now this next mode, droney mode, basically it will rise and move away from us and then it will come back as well. Basically it will move away like we're taking a selfie and then it will slowly come back as well and it will record the entire time. Basically any of these modes here we use, it will automatically record what's going on. It'll get to the point where it stops. It'll create a new record file and it will come back and end up with two record files. So in this case, we'll have one moving away and we'll have a nice one coming towards as well. If we're in manual mode, we have to turn recording on manually. Circle. Now this next one here is circle. It will basically track our face and it will circle around us in a full 360 while taking a video. Looks kind of cool and it's a very simple one. Rocket. And this next one is rocket. Very cool. It will point straight down on top of us and it will move up like a rocket, come to a certain point and stop and then set another record file and come back down as well. We can make it spin while it does this and we can set the distance from four, six, up to 10 meters of height before it comes back down again as well. All of these have custom settings that we can set the distance, the height, the speed, all them different things can be changed depending on what mode we're in. Spotlight. So this next one is spotlight. Basically the drone will move away to a set range, one that we can set in settings as well. And it will look at our face and it will move as we move, but it will stay stationary. Much like a spotlight on a main character, it will follow you for as long as you need it to. So this next one is direction track. Now basically it will keep moving in the direction it started in, usually if you're walking towards it, and it will keep tracking in that direction. It's very similar to follow me, and this one also has another custom setting as well. We can go into the phone and we can change this one to boomerang, which is very similar to circle, but it will actually move out in an elliptical way and then move back in. We can also change it to helix, which is very similar once again to circle, but it moves out and up in like a helix shape. So that one there is a custom one. I've got it set at direction track, but we can change it as well. Now the last mode set by our phone is manual mode, but we can control everything that the drone does through virtual joysticks. We can also change how the joysticks look through settings. And we also have the ability to turn on and off recording if we want to and take photos. It also has a microphone. We can mute that or we can turn it on and it will record audio through our phone or through any microphone that's plugged into our phone. So no matter how far away the drone is, if we have our phone on our person and we talk, it will hear it in real time. If the drone is close to us, it will automatically cut out the sound of the propellers, which I think is very clever. We can have the drone nice and close, the propellers are making a lot of noise, and it automatically will cut that sound out. And here is a little bit of me talking into the phone with the drone very close. And it can record your voice while removing the sound of the propellers, which I think is very cool. And as you can see, you can't hear the drone. The microphone on my phone isn't amazing. It was a windy day, but it sounds perfectly fine. And the drone isn't interrupting the sound at all. So that's all the modes and the features of this drone. What about some of the pros and the cons? Well, on the con side of things, we don't have any sensors for collision avoidance on the top or to the sides. We do have two on the bottom here for when we park it on our hands and to avoid it crashing into things below it. And it does use the camera to get an idea of what's in front of it so it doesn't crash into things when you're into follow me mode or anything like that. But we do not get sensors above. So if we crash into a tree or something, it will actually allow us to do that. On a drone of this price, I wouldn't expect that, but it's certainly a feature it doesn't have. It's also quite wind affected. As we see there, it was affected by 24 km an hour winds and it was moving about quite a bit. It also affected how fast it could go when I was riding on my push bike and it was following me into a headwind. It was actually quite a bit slower than when we had a tailwind. That top speed of six meters a second in auto mode isn't amazing either. It's okay if you're jogging or walking, but if you wanna ride at a fast pace, you probably need a bit of a faster drone for that as well. Also, the 50 meters range on the phone when you're in Wi-Fi mode, it isn't a lot. It's perfectly fine for what most people will be doing. But once we get above that 50 meter range, we either need to spend more money on a controller or we run out of range and we have to follow the drone with our phone 
or allow it to disconnect and then we have to go and retrieve it. Now finally we move on to the pros. Now of course the biggest pro is the cost. It's an excellent cost for a beginner drone and the reason it's so cheap is we're not buying unnecessary hardware. We just get the drone and we can connect it to our existing phone, saving on cost for everyone. It also has location in it, so it stops you from flying in any no-fly zones. It stops you getting in trouble if you're flying in the wrong area. A lot of cheaper drones don't have that technology in them and you can get in trouble for flying in the wrong place. It also is compatible with your USB-C charger, so for the most part your existing charger will charge it up and it's quite compact and you can just take it with you quite easily and it will take off from the palm of your hand either using voice control, the controller from DJI or of course your phone. And for that I think it's an excellent beginner drone. It takes excellent pictures and very smooth video and for $299 I don't think you can go wrong. You can just put it in the palm of your hand, let it take off and it will do all the work making excellent videos and making you look very very good. So for me I think that's a great buy. Thank you very much for watching.